So we're gonna start making some royal icing because that's what you guys wanted to see. So I'm gonna do a double batch of royal icing. Uh, it's gonna be six tablespoons, uh, which is a quarter cup, yep, I'm a mess, of meringue powder plus two tablespoons. And then half a cup plus two tablespoons of water. And then I'm going to mix these together um, in the stand mixer with the towel attachment. Uh, right now I'm just getting things wet. Now I prefer to use um, the right powder instead of egg whites. Uh, partially because it's easier and partially because then you don't have to worry about salmonella. Um, and it's, yeah, I, I highly recommend that. It's just slightly safer. Not that raw eggs are really gonna give you salmonella most of the time. They are generally pasteurized and fine for use, but just in case. Um, I just added two pounds of uh, powdered sugar, or I often call it 10X, um, but then not everyone understands what I'm saying. So if you ever hear me say 10X, powdered sugar. Uh, I'm going to add this slow to start so it doesn't fly everywhere. And as it gets more incorporated, I'm going to turn up the heat a little bit after all the dry mix is in. There we go. You're going to notice that's like really, really stiff. So, just add a little bit of water. Royal icing is pretty much glue for food. Um, so this is what you would use if you're making a gingerbread house and you want it to stick together. Um, when we're icing cookies, we're going to thin this out with a good amount of water. And um, if you're not using gel food dyes, um, the food dye will also thin it out a little bit. So I like to add my food dye before I add the water, just in case that thins it. Um, you do have to be a little careful about not adding too many bubbles, too much air in when you're mixing. Uh, but it's not the end of the world if you have some bubbles.